Hello everyone, my name is Daniel Medeiros and I will be presenting the paper named Profile Guided Frequency Scaling for Latest Critical Search Workloads. This paper was written in collaboration with Mr. Denilson Morin and Dr. Vinicius Petrucci. Uh, very well, let's start with the motivation of our research. Uh, in the last 20 years, we have seen a miniaturization of the, the form factor of the device we've been using. So we pretty much moved for a desktop to a mobile cell phone. And what does this mean? This means, you ask me. Uh, for companies, this means that they are they need for to scale because main services such as file storage, such as music stream, music listening, and word processing are now done in the cloud. And as the demand grows, the companies need to scale. But how to scale? Uh, the first, the first option, the most obvious option, to be honest, is acquiring better hardware. But you have some physical constraints, you have cost constraints, and you can't do this for under 10 hours. So, well, what to do next? Uh, another problem of this, of acquiring more hardware, is because the safety time to the user is usually defined by the slowest server. So it doesn't matter if you have a lot of rabbit fast servers, if you have a turtle tortoise one. So, well, how do we solve these two, these two problems at the same time? Uh, there are multiple approaches to this. Uh, some use hardware settings, some use uh, software solutions, and uh, one that are famous are usually on software side. You have the application, you have a external scheduler or, or another application that with input of the app data, the CPU data, it is able to, to, do, to make decisions uh, intelligently enough for the, to, to achieve the imposed deadline. This means uh, increasing frequency or decreasing fre CPU frequency according to the demand or changing hardware in case changing the request from a uh, little CPU to a big CPU on heterogeneous architecture like big dot little and well, that's it. Uh, in this paper, we have a different approach. We'll be using an uh, intra software approach. So we have an application and instead of having an uh, external application, we will instrument our safety application and try, and try to check what's possible to do with our request. So the baseline of our, of our work is the following. By understanding the behavior of an application, are we able to reduce energy consumption while maintaining tail latency requirements? Because energy consumption is also very costly for companies. And we want to answer our requests within our deadline while also minimizing costs. So that's what we are trying to do here. So let's go to the next topic. Uh, let's briefly speak about hardware and software. Uh, well, we used the Intel Xeon with 24 cores for running our, our experiments. Uh, both services were at this CPU. It was hosted by the Chameleon Cloud Service, which is sponsored by the National Science Foundation. And this processor has two sockets. Uh, each socket has an energy register, which we can measure the energy before and just right after the experiment. So the socket zero, we put our search, search application, which is Elasticsearch. And on the other one, we run the Fabian client application. Fabian uh, generates random search requests. Uh, what is Elasticsearch? Uh, Elasticsearch uh, first, let's talk about Lucene. Lucene is a uh, Java library which has all sorts of algorithms for, for search services like searching, like scoring, like indexing, and but it's only the algorithms. Uh, Lucene can't do much. So Elasticsearch 
use Lucene as a, a as a base and build a total infrastructure for for companies to use. Uh, this means that well, we have a, a Elasticsearch cluster, which is the entire service, and this cluster is comprised of different nodes. Uh, you can think uh, each node is a a, a PC. Uh, a system, a different uh, distributed system, like IP, IP, IP0, IP1, IP2. And then each node is comprised of shards. Yeah. Shards are basically indexes which the request will be searching. Uh, this means that the distributed net nature of Elasticsearch, whenever uh, a user makes a request, it goes to the cloud, and the request is distributed among all nodes and from and within our nodes, it is distributed among all shards. So the answer will be perceived will be give, perceived by the slowest shard on the on the Elasticsearch cluster. So, well, we are we are talking about a search application, and well, we know that search that uh, different requests will behave different. This means that uh, a request with one keyword will be slightly, not slightly, but way faster to be answered than a very large one with like 11 to 16 keywords. Uh, not only this, these graphs show that different frequencies uh, make difference in the, in the, in the safety time. Because, well, there, there is CPU calculations done here and they are significantly enough to make everything slow or faster. So, well, 2.6 GHz is faster than running at 1.0 GHz. Not only this, but as you can see here, uh, uh, heave or high keywords are also slower than low ones. So different requests different request behave differently. The last point to talk about our hardware is Linux. Uh, we use it, we have a, a DFS a processor which allows us to change the frequency, frequency on a per core basis and, that, and, and we use the ACPI driver for this on, under the CPU fracking model. And we have four governors which are which are um, like, well, they do the decision making based on the CPU data usually. Well, uh, performance runs the everything at the highest frequency. This means that everything will be run at 2.6 GHz, which is the maximum of our processor. Power save does the opposite, runs at the minimum, uh, 1.0. Uh, user space is uh, the frequency which we we set, like we can run the core four at 1.7 gigahertz. That's that that's what the user space will do. And the lastly, on demand, which is a uh, dynamic governor. So it checks the CPU usage, and after a threshold, it will increase the frequency to the max maximum 2.6, and then it will gradually going low until reaches 1.0 GHz again. But if the threshold is achieved again for CPU usage, it goes to 2.6 GHz again, back, back to 2.6, sorry. Uh, we run a, a brief compa comparison on here for our governors. Uh, you can see that power, power save uh, misses the deadline of one second. Uh, both power, uh, performance and on-demand are within our the, the line, but on demand saves energy of for about a four dot four percent in comparison with performance. So that's why we are considering on demand for as a, our baseline. Uh, okay, just to reinforce what I said before, here we have uh, the on demand time for each frequency, and you can see that it concentrates its frequencies on the maximum and at the minimum. So in the, everything in between are on the middle. You don't have uh, very high values for this. So 
well, let's talk about the research itself. So we know that requests different are requ different requests are different, and there are there is apparently CPU usage on the request. So we run perf, Linux perf, and generated the frame graph with the Brad and Greg's from Netflix script. And well, in the end, discovered that this function named search service execute dot execute query phrase is a dominates the CPU usage when Elasticsearch is doing search. So we came up to the assumption, uh, very well, what if we, we monitor threads and during the, as, the thread access of to this function, search safety execute query phase, we increase the frequency of increases the frequency of that that specific core the threading is running at. So uh, we first need to build an infrastructure for for this idea. Uh, we have the Java virtual machine here. We have the Elasticsearch uh, with two two different nodes. Uh, whenever a, a request is arrived, uh, each request will go to uh, each thread because we configure it to this way. And at some point, the thread will will enter and exit the hot function, which is the execute query phase. We I I've shown before. Uh, during the entry and exit points, we'll oops sorry, we'll use a JVMTI agent for monitoring. Uh, what is this JVMTI agent? <coughs> uh, it's uh, in Java as well. And we will have the entry and the exit events. And they will be put into a, a query. And our governor or scheduler, which is named here, will, through an algorithm, will take the, will des decide if it's time to increase the frequency of the certain core or decrease the frequency of, of that core. Uh, remember that cores are associated to threads. There is one thread per core. So, the governor is also the only interface to CPU frack. Uh, no, nobody else will be able to access CPU frack to, well, it will lower the overhead. So, uh, we, we, have, we, we know that there's a relation of core, of core voltage and power, and we, we want to we we want to decrease the power consumption. So how will we do it? Uh, let's take some observations. Uh, the first one is that Elasticsearch has no request to process. Uh, in this case, we want to minimize energy and we don't care about safety time because, well, there's nothing to do. So in this state, we will run at 1.0 GHz, which is our minimum. The second state is when we are doing search, normal search, uh, like uh, medium keywords or low keywords. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, in this case, we also want to minimize energy because we are running light and middle requests. And well, look at this graph. Uh, we know that starting on 1.7 gigahertz, we'll be able to achieve the 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 deadline because the deadline is one one second, but the inter interesting fact here is that the lowest energy consumption is at 2.0 gigahertz. Why? Because if you run at a uh, lower frequency, you end you will will end the running for more time doing the, doing the same work. So the re the relationship between energy and safety time doesn't work here, and 2.0 GHz is the magic number here. So in the state one, for most requests that arrive, we will run at 2.0 GHz. Uh, the final state is, well, we don't care about energy because we are running a uh, high request. So if we, are, we aren't faster, we will lose the deadline. Well, we run very fast here. Uh, this graph summarizes what I've been talking. Uh, if you are doing, not doing search state, not, uh, state 0, doing search state 1, and intensive search state 2. 
So how we do implement this? Uh, the, you can stop the video to check this this algorithm, but we the most basic idea we have here is the threshold. So if he, the thread enters the, the the function, we keep monitoring if it's after a certain time, and if it's at like present. Uh, 300 milliseconds on the executing that hot function, we consider that I uh, I have thread, so we set the frequency to the maximum. Else, it is stay at 2.0 gigahertz, and here it goes. Uh, the results. Uh, our first implementation, as you can see, we had 6% uh, of energy energy savings in comparison to on demand. And both of them are within our deadline. I I like to use the high keywords or have keywords to compare because they are the the ones that gener generate most strain in the system. So well, but regardless, the hurry up saved energy in our in our case. And overhead here. Uh, we run the experiment without changing frequency, without CPU fre fre frequency, but executing our heuristic, and well, that's that's kind of uh, overhead here. We had 40% of overhead on such time. We had 11% on energy savings. So Java is costly here. Uh, sit, uh, sit state analysis. This graph uh, you can stop the video as well to to check this graph. But you can see that uh, this graph is, is, is better to, to see. But you can see that hurry up, both hurry up and on demand stays at 1.0 GHz for most of the, of the time. However, uh, on demand it stays also on 2.6 GHz for 40% of the time, while hurry up stays at 2.0 GHz. And this has a, a very big energy saving. So, well, that's a lot. Uh, you can see that for on demand, it's only f about 5% here for other frequencies. So, we calibrated our, our, our hurry up. We run a lot of experiments for threshold for sleep time. And we came to the conclusion that, well, our calibrated hurry up saved 2% because most of the, the difference isn't small. Uh, at, th at this time here, but when you are running high requests for a long time, you have a 17% of energy consumption here. Uh, very well, uh, we run a three times higher load for for both, and in this case, you can see that we have up to 27% of energy savings in favor of hurry up. And well, that's a lot. And this is a DFS processor uh, because we don't var variate voltage, but uh, on this case, only the frequency. So uh, we believe that on DVFS, we'll, this this gains will be ev even better. Everything is out within the the deadline, and we aren't use the high setting here because both on demand and both uh, hurry up lost the deadline. Uh, as conclusions, uh, we can show that the Picard DFS on application profile can deliver great energy saving compared to its existing Linux policies. Uh, if we understand the application behavior and the best frequency for each request class, we can make better this, uh, DFS decisions. And the last one, uh, related to the research itself, is the saving of 27% compared to on demand, which is highly optimized to Linux, to Linux uh, on, on Linux. So well, that's good. Uh, I think that's it. We hope I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Uh, that's a lot more on our paper, and if you have time, please read it. Thank you.